Milton Keynes top scorer Bobby Chamberlain and coach Lewis Clifford. And now at four on four, this is Christie behind the Milton Keynes net, plays it up to his teammate Norris. And Norris has iced the puck because we are even. That will come all the way back down. Uh, Norris perhaps a little loss of focus there. Two minutes, 52 seconds played of this final already. 14 seconds remain on the penalty assist to Bonner. 152 on to Talbot. Wallace wins the face off for the Lightning, but it's turned over and it's now out in front with Valdix. Valdix feeds Smith at the Sheffield point. Smith's shot in was brought down by Towner, plays it to Valdix and Valdix scores. Glove side on Smith. -Hull. Well, there it is. The first punch has been thrown and it goes in favour of the Sheffield Steel Dogs. Great play to get the puck back into Valdix. Uh, under pressure, still manages to get it over Smith Isle. It's now Milton Keynes Lightning nil, Sheffield Steel Dogs one. So, uh, well, fantastic goal for the Steel Dogs to score because they managed to score it before their power play has actually begun. So they've got the power play in the bank and they're going to have uh, one minute and 30 seconds of power play after the four seconds of um, their penalty has elapsed. So Kirk now to Hewitt. Back out. Hewitt crosses Bonner. the blue. It's now power play time. And Bonner spins it round for Bissonette. Bissonette goes to work against Stewart. And Towner dug the puck loose, but uh, the Milton Keynes Lightning managed to get hold of it and sling it round out of the reach of Zimozdra. Kirk comes back on defensive position for Steel Dogs. Plays it across to Hewitt. Hewitt thought about the cross ice pass, but instead he played it up the wing to Towner. And Towner's chipped it in and then gone to work against Leishroom to try and turn over. But the puck ended up loose, and that was an easy clear for the MK defence. Three minutes 47 gone in the game, 55 seconds remains on the power play. This is Kirk looking for Bissonette, but Graham intercepted the pass, and Bissonette played it back to Graham. May have had an offside here. Well, they've come out of the blocks firing. This is a completely different Sheffield Steel Dogs that we saw yet from yesterday. I did say that to Gary in the intro. I wonder whether they do that. It's quite clear they have. Hewitt's gunning for this one. So, Bonner on the draw against Tim Wallace. And it's Bonner that's won this one. Kirk now stepping over the red. He's got Graham on this wing. He takes a hard hit, hit from Lewis Christie there. Lewis Christie really hammered him down, but now Kirk is up and he's fit. Hewitt, what a goal! Jason Hewitt with the one-time snipe. See it again, just in the replay there. Gets the puck fed in from the off point. One times it over the shoulder of Smith Isle. And like that, it's now Milton Keynes Lightning zero, Sheffield Steel Dogs two. He's well, got Nags into support and defenseman Nags brings it away and then gets a quick reverse from Barnes Garner. But the pass up the ice was a loose one. And Hewitt now, dangerous, low shot, big rebound, but it was first stick there was a Milton Keynes stick. Batted it to the side where Graham ends up with it in the corner, working to bring it out front. And Hewitt just needed to have it on his stick blade. And that was all it would have taken with that cross crease pass. Now Graham again tries a soft pass this time inside to Hewitt. That didn't work. It was broken up by Griffin. Cowley now backhanding to Leishroom as MK come across. Tight angle, Back score, angle Stewart. Goal. Back door goal, Stewart. What a goal. It was worked well. We'll see it again in the replay. Leishroom takes it into the zone. Holds it, holds it. Last minute. He lets Stewart put the burst in. Back door wide open. Beats the Mushra. It's now MK Lightning 1. Sheffield Steel Dogs 2. We've got a game on our hands, George. Game on. Six minute 47, God. So the beach ball that these uh, that the fans have been bouncing around has bounced up into the commentator's booth. Uh, it made its way onto the ice in one of our games, if you it recall. Did. This is uh, green for MK. Fans have got their ball back now. Uh, green backhands one in for Leishroom to go after but it's Morgan that breaks that up Morgan backhands one off the boards for Hewitt to get onto but that came apart and now Tim Smith for Sheffield on defence to Matt Bissonette Bissonette to Hewitt Hewitt driving wide 
tried to shoot inside, but that was blocked by Green. And now Bissonette, uh, uh, Hewitt holds the puck up. Sorry for Bissonette. Bissonette. What a goal! Just a perfect wrist shot over the blocker of Smithall. See it again, the replay. Puck behind the Milton Keynes net, gets it out inside the face-off circle. Picks his spot block aside, absolutely rips it. And with that, it's Milton Keynes Lightning 1, Sheffield Steel Dogs 3. Interestingly, the MK defenseman choosing to go to man to man marking. Hewitt not, not happy with the face off dot. He's doing a bit of uh, sweeping up. And he's lost that face off. And Green on the point plays it down. Talbot now. Talbot gets it in behind for Norris. Norris steps out and tries a shot. We're blocked by Hewitt. And then Norris in close. And the puck is loose in front of Zimozdra. Nags now to Talbot in prime position, but that didn't work oh. out. And a big high stick on Hewitt here. Talbot's stick came up, caught Hewitt. And uh, that will certainly be at least two minutes here. You see it again. Oh, you see in the replay, that's a nasty one. Well, Hewitt looks to be all right. He's back up on his feet, readjusts his Sportingly, helmet. Sportingly, Talbot did go over to check he was okay. However, that's not going to bode well for the Lightning just as they were building some momentum but now go on the penalty kill for two minutes so Sheffield have Valdix Bonner and number 14 out there that's James Spur and it's loose for Haywood Haywood thought about the one time but didn't and then played it to his D partner Morgan and this is Spur Spur plays it behind the net to Valdix. Valdix up to Haywood. Back down to Valdix. Valdix at the top of the circle. Plays it down to Spur. Spur backhands it to Valdix. Working it, looking for openings. Coming inside, trying to find Bonner in the bumper position. Valdix stepping through the seam. Back to Bonner. 30 seconds Bonner to Valdix. And that was a sprawling block. I think it's underneath underneath the MK defenseman. And well, it seems we've gone off here. Griffin's now. furious. Griffin and Bonner. And Griffin's being sent the box now. Wow. Well, the Sheffield fans are loving that. Not so much the MK fans. You see it there. Griffin, Bonner, Valdix. Valdix is not happy, but I think they've taken, they've played two, two roughing equal penalties here it looked like Valdix was being taken to the box but no no he's going back to the bench no it is it's going to be a five on three five on three in favour of the uh, Steel Dogs you know what we say here and drop the puck George you should always score in a five on yeah. three one minute and 25 seconds with a two man advantage MK just working out who they're going to have out it looks at the moment like Wallace who you would expect as their most experienced player to be there Christie on defence and I think this is Norris whereas Hewitt is positioned on the point and we saw that wicked one-timer shot from him earlier he'll be looking to line that one up again so this is Bissonette looking for an opening that came off a stick and good hustle by Wallace to pull it loose and get it out of the zone ten minutes Hewitt knocks now. it straight back in for Bissonette yeah ten minutes gone in the second period now as we approach almost a minute of the first power play Bissonette dropped it for Hewitt and Hewitt wristed it in and now it's loose and oh that was Graham the lights come on but I can confirm that did not go in Bissonette circling yes that one did Bissonette through the screen we see it again in the replay Bissonette just circles around with the puck and then right through all the traffic takes some of Hull's vision all the way So credit to Sam Towner there who was providing the screen as Bissonette uh, and MK coming away. One minute on the clock now. One minute away here from Sheffield Steel Dogs victory in which they have looked very, very comfortable winners of this uh, cup competition. MK flip the puck in, going after it for one last attempt at a goal Bonner gains red 
flips it in. The volume rises, the Milton Keynes fans clapping their team right till the end. 38 seconds. The Sheffield on, 30 seconds left. players Sheffield are up bench. on their feet. They're already dancing. Elevating the fans, everything's rising. 20 seconds left to play. What an occasion it's been. Hayward across to Kirk. Kirk takes a glance at the Sheffield clock. Sheffield in possession. MK not even trying anymore. Hayward. This they has know. been a masterclass. Simostra's arms are up. Five, four, three, two, one. And there it is. The Sheffield Steel Dogs are your NIHL national champions. Well, it's been building up to this moment, Ben. It has. When all the hard work of the season and the extras paid off to being here and the work that's been done this weekend. And that is well, the presentation. Lewis Bell steps forward, picks it up. And with that, your NIHL national champions for 2022, the Sheffield Steel Dogs, celebrating with their fans. It's been a superb weekend of hockey, Gary. We've had thrills and spills, deeks and dangles. But we've had no shootouts or shutouts, interestingly. Well, do you know what? Even though there was a few, you know, we had a few penalties, but there was nothing major. I think discipline was brilliant over the weekend. The teams showed great spirit. And the fans, well, the fans were just fantastic. I mean, that's the one thing for me. A sport like this, the fan support is amazing. It is, and it's really highlighted this weekend of how much you know hockey means to, to these people and uh, I know the players will want a, a long earned rest but I'm betting you the fans are hungry for more they want a rest <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know it's been, a, it's been a tiring weekend it's been a great season as well it's been, it has been a brilliant season but of course when it, when it ends in something like that it's all been well worth it and I'm sure the Steel Dogs are going home really really pleased with their result from this weekend and of course, their national trophy. Joining me this time is the head coach of the Milton Keynes Lightning, Lewis Clifford. Lewis, after the performance we saw you put in on Saturday, a lot of people favoured you going into today. Can you shine any light on what happened? Um, well, firstly, uh, hats off to the Steel Dogs. You know, the better team on the night. Um, congratulations to them. Absolutely deserved winners tonight. Um, sort of to your point about um, last night, I, I don't know whether you know, putting ourselves in the hole like we did early doors last night has had an effect going into today, possibly, yeah. very possibly. Um, but, but you know what, um, fundamentally, um, you know, I think shots were relatively even tonight. I think there was like two or three in it across the, across the game. Yeah. Um, and and their, their goal scorers just executed a little bit better than us and they, they defended a little bit better than us as a team and just their, everything, they were a better team. And, and um, when you get beat like that, you know, all you can really do is say fair play to the team that's beaten you and uh, and you try and learn from it and, and progress. Um, it's just a long break until we get to do it again. Uh, understandable. <coughs> the game plan you seemed to come out with was pure adrenaline and fire and trying to hit them on the back foot early. We knew Sheffield were good at smothering that defence. We'd seen them do it with Telford. Yeah. Was there anything said at the end of the first to possibly try and change that up or was it try and break the deadlock? Uh, yeah, re really... Um, yeah, try and, try and break it. I think we believed in what we were doing because it's what we've been doing for the last little while and, yep. it, and it's got us here. You know, fundamentally, when something's got you to a final... Um, if it ain't broke, you, don't fix exactly. it. Exactly. You're not yeah. going to try and, you know, try and change things up too much. But, you know, we, we play quite a simple brand of hockey. Um, but, you know, everyone has to play their little piece. Um, and I think what we got into yesterday, certainly, is that everyone was trying to do a bit too much. Yeah. Uh, and there was too much work going on early doors and guys flying all over the place, flying around and uh, leaving gaps everywhere because everyone's so excited to be here. Obviously, you know, our fan base is huge when we come to weekends like yep. this. Um, uh, and uh, I think tonight it was just a little bit 
you know, we were trying to do what we were doing, and Sheffield did a really good job of taking away, you know, bits and pieces that we, we were looking for. Um, I think, you know, power plays, they got more power plays than we did. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no point complaining about it now, but I think we probably deserve one or two more. Um, but fundamentally, you know, we, we lost to a better team. I, c I can only say it so many times. No, no, I fully appreciate that. But let, let's look at the squad that you've had this year. I mean, Tim Wallace has been absolutely amazing and supporting him with the young lads up as <coughs> wingmen, where they've been able to be sponges and absorb from him and literally act as his wingmen as well, putting those shots in for him. We saw that yesterday and we saw it again today. Yeah, absolutely. Timmy's been great for us. You know, it took him a little while to get going, actually, and it also took us a little bit of time to find the right place for him in the team. Um, obviously, he's, he's an older guy, not old, but he's an older guy on the yeah. team. And, uh, he hadn't played for a couple of years, so it took a while for him to find his groove and, and for us to find the right right slot for him. And once we did, he's been phenomenal through these playoffs. Um, and his line mates, um, Holden Barnes Garner and Mikey Power, like they they've been our most effective line actually for the for the last well four weekends, three and a half weekends. <laughs> yeah, uh, and obviously you've got depth in there as well. I mean, I could I could rattle off names all night. You've got Norris, Talbot, Liam Shute as well. Absolute hell of a player. When you bring so much firepower, does it kind of come with a an almost pretense of what you bring in as a package? Uh, I think so. I think what it does is, when it works, is that you're not always relying on one person to be the goal scorer. Yeah. You know? uh, and, and I think you probably saw that over our playoff campaign, that different guys are going different nights and, and you're not always looking, you know, like certain teams, like, and I'm not afraid to say it, I'm sure that um, Greg Wood would agree, like most of Sheffield's offense comes from one line. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas we try and spread it about a little bit because it, it doesn't always click, you know. It, yeah. We play every Saturday, every Sunday, quite a lot of midweek games as well. And some nights one line's just not going. So having a bit of depth in there, a bit of secondary scoring, but it's, rather than being secondary scoring, it's just more primary scoring, if, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, and, no, it does, yeah. And nine times out of ten, that will get us out of, out of a hole. Uh, and tonight, it didn't, you know. Now, we, we mentioned in the commentary as well, and you can't not talk about the team without talking about the netminders. Mm. Matthew Smith, absolute star, had a blinder of a, a, a playoff and then was really tested over this weekend. Yeah, he was. Um, you know what? I, I haven't seen a single video of anything. I didn't see any video from last night uh, or from, you know, obviously the Sheffield and Telford game. Um, and obviously I've seen nothing from, from tonight. But um, Smith was huge for us for the six games to get us there, or the five games to get us there until we'd qualified. And, um, you know, he's a young goalie and he'll learn. Um, you know, Pressure affects different people different ways. Um, I don't think anyone was under pressure so much um, as the pressure that they put on themselves and the pressure that's put on them by, you know, the unbelievable fan base that we've got that travel with us and the noise that they're making. Yeah. And, and sometimes that can tire you out and that can drain you emotionally. Um, but no, Smith, Smith's got a huge future. He's very young. You know, he's a very young starting goalie in this league. And um, and what he showed over the last three weekends that uh, he's more than capable and um, and he'll come again and he'll get better and better for the next five, six, seven years, you know, which is quite a scary thing. And that, that is literally the, the message for Milton Keynes Lightning. Look what we bring. We've got this wealth of talent. We're only going to get better going forward as well. Any last words for the fans that were here wholeheartedly from day one cheering you through? Uh, no, it just doesn't come as a surprise to us anymore, uh, but we don't take it for granted, you know. Um, you know, I think anyone would have to admit that our fans were were the best here, um, phenomenal. Certainly yeah, the loudest, yeah, we'll agree. the loudest, and um, you know, we, we we appreciate it so much. But I think sometimes it's hard to to vocalise how much we appreciate our fans. Um, you know, sometimes we deserve it, like we did last night, and sometimes we probably don't deserve as much support as that. But they never change, and um, the the fans from other teams as well. Um, they all brought a great atmosphere. Um, congratulations to everyone that won a trophy this year. You know, I think three teams won four trophies. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't one of them, but, you know, next season's a new year and, and we go again. Excellent, well, Lewis. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, mate. Cheers. I'm joined at this time by NIHL national champion head coach, Greg Wood. Greg, it's been an absolute pleasure calling this game today. The Steel Dogs have got something special. What is it you've taught them? Oh, it's not what I've taught them. It's a it's a core group of guys that have been together for the best part of ten years now, and uh, you know we've added a, some really good ingredients into that, and we've recruited really well over the summer, um, and it's just all come together. You know the guys worked really hard, and this is it's not just you know the last couple of weeks in the making. It's been since since August last year that we've been working for this. So uh, I'm absolutely over the moon for the players. You know they deserve everything. You know there's been a lot of adversity this year, and. Uh, 
it's just a great way to finish. Well, we, we called it on the commentary. You can you can split literal Sheffield down the middle. They've got the offensive firepower, which can shut any team up. And then you've got that, we called it a fire blanket. You can smother any sort of yeah. attack out. That has got to have taken some sort of mixture, some knowledge to have imparted there. Or is, is it literally everything's just been natural from the lads? Of course not, of course not. You know, we work very hard on the systems and I and I believe we've got the best game plan in the league and I think, you know, obviously this weekend we've limited the best team in the league, Telford Tigers and then Milton Keynes who are probably the most offensive team to two goals all weekend. Definitely. You know, so um you know, our game plan, and it's just, it's, it's great putting a game plan together, but I'm not, you know, I don't go out there and play hockey for, for 60 minutes, you know, it's the guys that execute things, so, yeah. you know, the way they executed it, and, you know, and they come together and work together as a team, and, you know, you can put all plans in place, but, you know, as soon as you start playing, things can go straight out the window, and things change, but credit to them lot, they work really, really hard, and, you know, they've stuck to what we know, and, uh, and obviously it's been a really successful weekend for us. Well, very much like a lot of the other teams as well, you have that nice balance of old shoulders to fall back on and young talent coming through. We saw it there, the likes of you know Lee Bonner, who's been around the game for a fair bit now, and even Dimitri himself, who was an absolute brick wall this weekend. But then you've got young lads like Louis Newell who were looking up as well. How important is it making sure that the knowledge is getting passed on? Oh, it's massive for the continuity of our team. Listen, we aren't a club that can go out and sign the best Brits from here, there and everywhere. We have to record a core group of players, like I said to you. The best part of that team has been together for 10 years and, you know, you likes of Louis Newell, Palmer, Thompson, Adams that we brought in this year. Yeah. These young guys are looking up at you likes of Bizonet, Hewitt, Morgan. They've got great role models. Yeah. You know, and if, and if playing alongside those guys will bring the level up and, you know, good habits all over the ice and they see it week in week out in practice and in games you know it's only going to aid their uh, aid their development so um, we're very lucky to have good professionals at this club and we're very lucky to have really enthusiastic talented youngsters so it's got the best of both worlds excellent now i've got to ask what is next for the sheffield steel dogs well you know uh, i think if we've been totally honest uh, with, with the club and we're very honest with that uh, with our budget and we're very honest with the resources we have we're always competing with the steelers in the top league um you know, we've got to try and retain the trophies we had. We won two this year. Maybe we try and get the league next year. And that's that's the way we've got to look at things. But um, we have to be very smart with the way we recruit and uh, and the guys we bring in. And we have to work to obviously constraints. But, um, you know, the group of guys I've got here is a very special group. And uh, obviously we'll maybe lose one or two. But um, we want to keep the you know the, the majority of the squad together. And yep. if we can add some you know little pieces here and there just to make us a little bit better, then we will do. Excellent. Well, I can tell you now, we're looking forward to next season for the Sheffield Steel Dogs. I know most of the fans will be as well. Greg, congratulations. Best of luck for the future. We'll see you again soon. So, thank you, guys. Cheers.